Today, I'm going to be reading the fourth part of chapter five of Hiroshima by John Hersey, Toshio Sasaki. In August 1946, Toshio Sasaki was slowly pulling out of the ordeal of pain and low spirits she had undergone during the year since the bombing. Her younger brother, Yesio, and her sister, Yekio, had escaped injury on the day of the explosion because they had been in the family home in the suburb of Koi. Now living with them there, she was just beginning to feel alive again when a blow came. Three years earlier, her parents had entered into a marriage, marriage negotiations with another family, and she had met and met the proposed young man. The couple liked each other and decided to accept the arrangement. They rented a house to live in, but Toshio's fiancé was suddenly drafted to China. She had heard he was black, but for a long time, he had not come to see her. When he finally showed up, it seemed clear to both parties that the engagement was doomed. Each time the fiancé appeared during young Toshio, whom Toshiko felt responsible, would rush angrily out of the house. They were, they were indications that the fiancé's family had second thoughts about permitting their son to marry a Habusakan and a cripple. He stopped coming. He wrote letters full of symbolic abstract images, especially butterflies, evidently, evidently trying to express his trembling uncertainty and probably guilt. The only person who gave the Shio any comfort was Father Klein Sorg, who continued calling on her in Koi. He was clearly bent over converting her. The confident logic of his instruction did little to convince her, for she could not accept the ideal that a god who had snatched away her parents and put her through such hideous trials was loving and merciful. She was, however, warmed and healed by priests' faithful faithfulness to her, for it was obvious that he, too, was weak in pain. Yet he walked great distances to see her. Her house stood by a cliff on which there was a grove of bamboo. One morning, she stepped out, stepped out of the house, and the sun's rays glistened on the middle like leaves of bamboo trees, took her breath away. She felt an astonished burst of joy. The first she had experienced in a long time, in a long, as long as she could remember. She heard herself reciting the Lord's Prayer. In, sep- in September, she was baptized. Father Clinesword was in the hospital in Tokyo, so Father Cislik officiated. Sasaki-san had some modest savings her parents had left, and she took in sewing to help support Yakusuma and Yekio. But she worried about the future. She taught herself to hobble without crutches. One day in the summer of 1947, she took the two for a swim at a beach at nearby Suganawa. There she got to talking with a young man, a Korean Catholic novice, who was tending a group of Sunday school children. After a while, he told her that he could not see how she could possibly go on as she was living. Responsible for her brother and sister and so fragile herself, he told her of good orphanage in Hiroshima called the Garden of Light. She entered the children in the orphanage, and a short time later she applied for a job as an attendant there. She was hired, and after that she spoke the solace of being with Yesio and Yakio. She was good at her work. She seemed to have found a calling, and the next year convinced her brother and sister were well cared for. She accepted a transfer to another orphanage called White, Prince of Matthew, Dorothy Mary, Dorth Amidori, in a suburb of Bebu, of Bebu, on the island of Kashiu. There, it would be possible for her to receive professional child care training. In the spring of 1949, she began commuting by train, about a half hour each way, to the city of Ottawa, to take courses of Ottawa Uni- uh, University to the city of Ottawa, to the economy. and in September, she passed an examination that qualified her as a nursery school teacher. She worked at the White Christian Junium for six years. Her lower left leg was badly bent, its knee was frozen, and its thigh was obtributed by the deep incisions Dr. Sasaki had made. The sisters in change of the orphanage arranged for her to enter the National Hospital in Bipu, for an orthopedic, orthopedic surgery. She was a patient there for 14 months, 
during which he underwent three major operations. The first, not very successful, to help restore her thigh. The second, to free her knee. And the third, to re-break her tibula and fibula and set them in the something like their original alignment. After the hospitalization, she went to nearby Hot Springs Therapeutic Center for Rehabilitation. Her leg would give her pain for the rest of her life, and her knee would almost would never again bend all the way. But her legs were now more or less equal in length, and she could walk almost normally. She went back to work. The white crisp manuthum with a base for 40 orphans stood near an American army base. On one side was an exercise field for the soldiers, and on the others were officers' houses. After the Korean War began, the base and the orphanage were packed. From time to time, a woman would bring in an infant father was an American soldier, never saying that she was the mother, usually frightened that a friend had asked her to entrust the baby to the orphanage. After all night, nervous young soldiers, some white, some black, having sneaked off base without leave, would come begging to see their offspring. They wanted to stare at their mother's baby's faces. Some of them tracked down the mothers and married them, though they might never again see their children. Sasaki-san felt compassion both for the mothers, some of whom were prostitutes, and for the fathers. She perceived the latter as confused boys of 19 and 20 who, as draftees, were involved in a war they did not consider theirs, and felt a rudimentary responsibility, or at or the very least, guilt. As fathers, these thoughts led to her, led to, her to an opinion of unconventional for the Habusake that too much attention was paid to the power of the A-bomb and not enough to the evil of war. Her rather better opinion was that it would be more lightly affected Habusake and power-hungry politicians who fo- focused on the A-bomb, and that not enough thought was given to the fact that warfare has instacrimally made victims of Japanese who had suffered atomic and incendiary bombings. Chinese civilians who had been attacked by the Japanese, reluctant young Japanese and American soldiers who were drafted to be killed or maimed. And yes, Japanese prostitutes and their mixed blood babies. She had first-hand knowledge of cruelty of the atomic bomb, but she felt that more notices should be given to the causes than to the instruments of total war. About once a year during this time, Sasaki-san traveled from Gashu to Hiroshima to see her brother and sister, and always to call on Father Kleinsorg, now Takumura, and Messiah Church. On one trip, she saw her former fiancé on the street, and she was quite sure he saw her, but they did not speak. Father Takumura asked her, Is your whole life going to be like this, working so hard? Shouldn't you be married? Or if you should not marry, shouldn't you become a nun? She thought about his questions. One day at the White Christianity San Mom, she got an urgent message that her brother had been in an automobile accident and might die. She hurried to Hiroshima. Yakso's car had she hur- hurried to Hiroshima. Yakso's car had been hit by a police patrol car. It had been the policeman's fault. Yakso survived, but four ribs and both legs had been broken. His nose had been caved in. There was permanent dent in his in his forehead, and he had lost of sight in one eye. Sasaki-san thought she was going to have to tend him and support him for good. She began talking account, account, atta- accounting courses and after a few weeks qualified as a third-class book, bookkeeper. But Yakso made a remarkable recovery and using compensation, he was paid for the accident and entered music school to study composition. Sasaki-san went back to the orphanage. In 1954, Sasaki-san visited Father Takamura and said that she knew she knew now that she would never marry, and she thought the time had come for her to go into a convent. What convent would you he would he recommend? He suggested the French Order of Alexandrus de Pugonier, helpers of holy souls, whose convent was right there in Messiah. Sasaki San said she did not want to enter a society that would make her speak foreign languages. He promised her she could stay with the Japanese. She entered the convent, and in the very first days, she found Father Takamura had lied to her. She was going to have to learn Latin and French. She was told that she, that when the knock of the revel came in the morning, she must cry out, 
Man Jesus Makurkord. The first night she wrote the words in ink on the palm of one hand, so she could read them when she heard the knock. When she heard the knock the next morning, but it turned out to be too dark. She became afraid she might fail. She had no trouble learning the Anguinum Smet, known as the Blessed Mary of Providence, the founder of the order, who in 1856 had started programs in Paris for care of the poor and for home nursing, and eventually sent to China. Twelve sisters she had trained, but at 30, Sasaki-san felt too old to be a schoolgirl, learning Latin. She was confined to the convent building, except for occasional walks, two hours each way, painful for her bad leg. To Makano, a mountain where three beautiful waterfalls. In the time she discovered she was, she had surprising hard full and tendency, which she credited all she had learned about herself in the hours and weeks after the bombing. When Mother Superior, Mary St. Jean de Kenty, asked her one day what she would do if she were told she had failed and would not leave, she said, I would take hold of the beam there and hold on with all my strength. She did hold on, and in 1957, she took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience and became Sister Demik Sasaki. By now, the Society of Helpers knew her strength and it assigned her straight from the novitiate to the post of director of home for 70 old people near Kazuwaki, Kashumi. Named the Garden of St. Joseph, she was only 33, and she became the first Japanese director of the home in command of staff of 15, five of whom French and Belgian nuns. She had to plunge straight into ne- negotiations with local and national bureaucrats. She had no books to read on for the age. She inherited a descript of wooden buildings for Murd Temple, an institution that had difficulty even feeding as its enfeebled inmates, some of whom had been sent out forging for firewood, mostly of the old men of the coal from notorious Kashu mines. Some of forging nuns were crusty, and their modes of speech, unlike those of the Japanese, were blunt, harsh, and hurtful to Sister Sasaki. Her hard-earned dodgeness told, and she remained fully in charge of the Garden of St. Joseph for 20 years. Thanks to her schooling as an accountant, she was able to introduce a rational system of bookkeeping. Eventually, the Society of Helpers, with support, with support from branches in the United States, raised money for a new building, and Sister Sasaki supervised the construction of a concrete block structure cut into the brow of a hill. A few years later, a subterranean waterway began to undermine it, and she saw to its replacement with a more modern building of reinforced concrete with single and double rooms fitted with Western-style wash basins and toilets. Her greatest gift, she found, was the ability to help inmates to die in peace. She had seen so much death in Hiroshima after the bombing, and she had seen the strange things so many people did when they were concerned by death. That nothing now surprised or frightened her. The first time she stood watching by a dying inmate, she vividly remembered a night soon after the bombing when she lay in out in the open, uncared for, in dreadful pain, beside a young man who was dying. She had talked with him all night and became aware, above all, of his fear of fearful loneliness. She had watched him die in the morning at deathbeds in, in the home. She was always mindful of the terrible solitude. She would speak little to the dying person, but would hold a hand or touch an arm as an assertion simply that she was there. Once an old man revealed to her deathbed with such vividness, she felt she was witnessing the act that which she stabbed another man in the back and had watched him bleed to death. Through the murderer, not a Christian, Sister Sasaki told the God forgive him that he died in comfort. Another man had, like many other Kashu miners, been a drunk drunk hard and had sordid reputation. His family had abandoned him. In the home, he tried the pathetic eagerness to please to please everyone. He volunteered to carry coal from storage bins, and he stoked the building's boiler. He had seriosis of the liver, and he had warned not to accept the daily ration of five ounces of distilled spirits that the Garden of St. Joseph mercifully issued to former miners, but he continued to drink it. 
vomiting at supper table one night. He ruptured a blood vessel. It took him three days to die. Sister Sasaki stayed by, stayed beside him all the time, holding his hand, so that he might die, knowing that living had ple he had pleased her. In 1970, Sister Sasaki attended an international conference of working nuns in Rome, and after it, inspected welfare facilities in Italy, Switzerland, France, Belgium, and England. She retired from Garden of St. Joseph at the age of 55 in 1958 and was awarded a vacation trip to see the whole, to, to the Holy See. Unable to be idled, she installed herself at an outside St. Peter's, St. Peter's to give advice to Japanese tourists. Later, she became a, a tourist herself. In Florence, Padu, Assisi, Venice, Milan, and Paris. Back in, back in Japan, she did volunteer work for two years at the Tokyo headquarters of Society of Helpers. Then spent two years as a mother superior of the convent at Masai Sasaya, where she had taken her training. After that, she had led tranquil life as a superintendent of a woman's dormitory at the music school where her brother had studied. He had been taken over by the church and was now called Elizabeth College of Music. After finishing at the school, Yatso became qualified as a school teacher, and now he taught the composition and mathematics in high school in Kochi, on the island of Sasuku. Yekio was married to a doctor who owned his clinic in Hiroshima. A sister Sasaki could go to him if she needed a doctor. Besides continuing difficulties with her leg, she endured for some years a pattern of alignments, which, as many as with so many Habusakan, might or might not have been attributed to the bomb, liver dysfunction, night sweats, and morning fevers. Borderline enigma, blood spots on her leg, and signs in blood test, rheumatic factor, one of the happiest moments in her life came in 1980, while she was stationed at the society headquarters in Tokyo. She was honored at, the din at a dinner to celebrate the 25th anniversary of her becoming a nun. By chance, a second guest of honor that night was the head of the society in Paris, Mother General France Delcourt, who, it happened, had also reached her 25th year in order. Mother Del Delcourt gave Sister Sasaki a present of a picture of the Virgin Mary. Sister Sasaki made a speech, I shall not dwell on the past. It is if I had been given a spare life when I survived the A-bomb. But I prefer not to look back. I shall keep moving forward. Thank you for watching.